Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to teach you all about how to create digital locks for your escape rooms to run in your classroom. No more uh, physical locks, no more physical boxes if you don't want to have those things. This is a cheaper alternative and still um, has the same impact that, that physical locks and boxes have. All right, here we go. First of all, you're gonna to wanna to get to uh, your Google Drive. That would be drive.google.com. You'll click on New, and then Google Forms. Now, I'm gonna title this uh, Sample One, okay? Just because we're just playing around. And, uh, the, you know, the uh, title of this is just gonna be like Sample Digital Locks. All right, so, what you're going to be creating is a series of digital locks using questions. You can you can use multiple choice questions or um, text entry or numerical entry, any different uh, range of questions. So in this case, I'm going to choose. We're going to make a four digit um, four digit lock. So I'm going to choose a short answer, and I'm going to make it a required question which you'll always want to do. And I'm gonna choose these three, three little ellipses right here and choose response validation. Okay, so for the question itself, I'm gonna put in, this is gonna be for puzzle number one, and it's gonna be a four digit lock, or four digit um, code, no spaces. All right, so this is just information for the students to know what they're supposed to be working on and when, they're, when they need to answer it. All right, so it's a four-digit code, so we're gonna leave it as a number, and that number has to equal to, I'm just gonna make up a code here, one, two, three, four. All right, if it doesn't equal that, there's this custom error text here that says, um, you know, not even close, right? I like to poke fun at the students. Not even close. So let's take a look at what that looks like from the student's perspective. Uh, if you click on this eyeball up at the top, you can preview it. And so they get the title of the code. And they can only answer one code at a time. And it's puzzle one. They need a four-digit code. And they come up with this, right? Doesn't work. Not even close. Anything other than one, two, three, four is not going to work. All right. So let's string it together with a couple of other puzzles. I'm going to go back and I'm gonna go back to the code, and this is a key here. You're going to enter a next, or an add a section. Rather than go in and add a question here, you're gonna add a new section. All right, so the new section, I'm just gonna leave that blank, and I'm gonna call it puzzle number two. Actually, that's not true. I wanna call this puzzle number two. And then I'm going to say here, uh, this is going to be a five letter word, low, all lowercase, all lowercase, and then no spaces. So our code in this case is going to be the word atoms. Now, before we get going, I want to let them know that they that they got this one right. So I'm gonna add just a, this is something that I do. I add an image in here that I create in canva.com. And it's just a little image that says, hey, you got it right, let's let's move on to the next one. Okay, so what, what they're gonna see is, I'm gonna delete this out. This is not where I want this. So puzzle number two. Okay, what they're gonna see is first, they're gonna see the image, and then when you add the question at the bottom, I'm gonna move this question to the bottom. Come on, baby. Move this question to the bottom. Now I'm gonna enter the, that question. It's um, puzzle number two. And then the short answer here, I'm gonna put, or excuse me. No, that's fine, let's put it up here. Okay, it's a five letter word all lowercase, no spaces. I'm gonna make this required. I'm gonna add that response validation. Now, instead of a number, it's gonna be text. And the text needs to, you can do contains, doesn't contain, or whatever. Um, the, 
the text. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure I got this right. Contains atoms. All right. And if they didn't get it right, nope. Try again. All right. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we've got two questions now. The first one, you've got puzzle number one. They're going to enter their answer. They'll go click next. It's going to go to puzzle number two. They've got this image saying, hey, way to go. I see a bright future with this group. So that lets them know that they got it right. Now they have puzzle number two, five letter word, all lowercase, no spaces. I left the S off there. And the answer here was periodic, right? Nope, it's not. It's atoms. So when they click that, they go on to the next one. So you can continue to do that, do this over and over. Now, I'm going to add one more piece to the puzzle. And um, that's going to be the congratulations page. So after they, um, after they answer all the puzzles in the sequence, they're going to get like a su surprise. All right, congrats, you got it. One thing I want to point out, between the sections, it tells you after section one, go to, you can choose whatever you want, but continue to the next section, it'll just go in a sequential order. But if you wanted to switch things up for different groups, you could make copies of this form and then go in different paths, right? So maybe this one goes to section you know, four if we had that question or whatever. So this is important and they need to be in different sections. That's, that's really the whole key to this. I'm gonna add another section here and we're gonna call this section congrats and I'm gonna add an image in and this is just a congratulation image. And it lets them know, hey, you've done it all, claim your prize. Okay. So let's take a look at the whole thing. We'll click on the preview. This is the link that you would share with your students. Uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. So puzzle one, codes one, two, three, four. They click next, boom. Okay, we know this one is Adams, boom. They go get their next puzzle and so forth. Usually you're gonna have six, eight puzzles in a class. So I only put two in here, but when you click next, finally on that last puzzle, it lets you know you did it, take a bow, claim your prize. So, so this is the link here that you're gonna share with your students. Personally, uh, well, unless you use Google Classroom, <clears throat> I, would, uh, I would shorten this. So using a sh link shortener like bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, you can take this code and make it a, a lot shorter. So you could write it on your board or your smart board and they can just enter it in their phones. So all they'll need per group is just one connected device to access this form and they're good to go. You don't need any physical locks. You don't need any like, uh, you know, toolboxes, whatever. These become your locks. Hopefully that was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching. Take care and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.